الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله we often hear a lot about the hijrah and the ulama are, at, are asked often especially for those who reside or especially from those who reside in non-Muslim lands they often pose the question to the ulama, to the scholars of Islam and to the students of knowledge about issues related to the hijrah is it an obligation? Is it not an obligation? Can I practice if I can practice my deen in my uh, locality? Do I have to make hijra? Things like this, and what kind of preparation it requires to make hijra. So what I wanted to mention, without dealing with all the rulings and the in-depth speech and in-depth research of the ulama about this issue of hijrah and the aqwal of the salaf. These are very detailed issues. But really what I wanted to deal with here or speak briefly about is for those who have made up their minds to make the hijrah, what are some of the things that they should do to prepare themselves? And we know that the Prophet said, in Woman can a hitch to the dunya, O Imratin, Li Yanke Huha, for hitch to a Mahajira in a Kamakala Nebu, Salawadi Osella, O Kamakala Nebu, Salawadi Osella. So the Prophet said, Verily, actions are tied to the intentions, and everyone should get that for which he intended. Therefore, he, he who migrates for Allah and His Messenger, then he is migrated for Allah and His Messenger. And he who migrates to take some woman in marriage, then he will get that for what he has migrated for. And this is collected in Bukhari and Muslim. Ahabatifillah, one of the key things, of course, is the intention. So if you decide to make the hijrah to Allah and His Messenger, وسلم, which means, uh, which the ulama uh, mention amongst the different types of hijrah is leaving the land of disbelief to the land of belief. So leaving a non-Muslim country to live in a Muslim country. Or leaving the land of bid'ah. So it could be a Muslim country but it has a lot of bid'ah and a lot of uh, mukhalifat. Leaving that land to a land to the land of sunnah. So these, this is one of the types of hijrah and this is the main one I'm talking about. The other type of hijrah which is outside of our discussion is the hijrah from ma'asi meaning to leave off sinfulness and to come to uh, righteousness so to leave off sin and this is part of the maqsad or part of the purpose of making hijrah from the land of uh, disbelief to the land of tawheed or the land of Islam is that you're leaving off a sinful environment an environment where it's immersed in sin where it's difficult to practice your religion and you're going to a land where it is easier to practice your religion and also the hijrah can also be in a situation where you're leaving so you could be in one non-Muslim land and go to another non-Muslim land because that's all you're able to do so but you can practice your religion better there so in the first land maybe you find oppression maybe it's difficult for the women to wear hijab wear hijab properly uh, to study to do whatever they need to do and earn a living and perhaps there's another place where there's a lot of Muslims and it's easier to function and live an Islamic life so that is also possible to make that hijrah one of the things I want to mention, and this is the main reason for having this discussion, is preparation. So, of course, making the intention, to make a sahih intention that you're going to make this hijrah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to practice your religion better. Another thing I wanted to mention is that you should tie your camel. You should strive to make preparations to make the hijrah if you're able to do so. So what we often have is a lot of the youth uh, we find this in the in, in the West especially that they don't have preparations many of them they don't have a bill in their own societies they're uneducated maybe some of them haven't graduated from high school uh, they're not working they're unemployed or they're working in minimal menial jobs so those things do limit your hijrah 
Allah is going to fulfill his pro promise as he mentions in the ayat in Surah Al-Baqarah about those who make hijrah for his sake that he's going to pr provide for them ragaban kathira as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he's going to provide for them uh, many places and means and, and ways for them however you do not want to put yourself through extra hardship I've known people who've made hijrah places like Yemen who didn't have anything and they stayed with nothing and maybe they were dependent upon other people sending them maybe they have uh, gotten sick a multitude of time with a multitude of illnesses because they didn't have the means and they didn't have a, a, a way to live a, a healthier and a better lifestyle and to not be dependent upon the people or what have you that is one way but as the ulama mentioned, a tawakkul, when they define tawakkul, tawakkul ala Allah, when you rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a tawakkul ala Allah, who, who uh, uh, itimad ala Allah, wa fi'la asbab. It is relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and taking the actions to uh, fulfill those ends. So, therefore, the person who just makes dua, they don't have a job, they don't do anything to make the hijrah, but they say they want to make hijrah. They are not going to achieve much by this means, more than likely, unless Allah opens it up for them. You never know. And likewise, as going back to the first point of making preparation, that you should strive to better yourself. If you're in a non-Muslim land, especially for those of us who, are, who live in the West or from the West, take advantage of the opportunities that are there. If you are in the West, get educated. What is allowed for me, I've lived in Saudi Arabia more than 10 years, maybe like 12 years now, I think, uh, on and off. And I've lived in Yemen and so forth. But what is allowed for me, after the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is my education. Because I went to a university, I have a bachelor's degree, and I took, you know, uh, to get my English certification. The point being is making the effort. Get educated. Benefit from those society because those society have, as far as secular knowledge, they have the best education. Also, don't make things difficult upon yourself when it comes to work. If you have a way to make a halal means or several way, then do so. Don't be lazy and strive to Strive to educate yourself. Education, I would say, is one of the most key examples. Because even in Islam, or more importantly, I could say, in Islam, your education is, is for and for, first and foremost. That, as we know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, Know that there is no God worthy of worship and seek forgiveness for your sins. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded with knowledge first. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also commanded iqra, you know, read. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu said, Man bi Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him knowledge and understanding of the religion. So that is, uh, you know, showing the importance of seeking knowledge in the religious sense. Knowledge of the shara. This is al nafiya But also in the dunya, you need this in order to, especially in this new world, order, new world environment, you need to take those means. You cannot, you should not, we should not be have people from Ahl Sunnah or say that Ahl Sunnah, that this is a benefit of them, is that they're the poorest people. No, that is, that's a, uh, if you're practicing your Islam strong in poverty, then alhamdulillah, that's a great ni'mah. But if you have wealth, you're able to do much more. You have the ability to spend on the poor. You have the ability to uh, spend in the various ways of khair and help others and assist others and raise up the uh, raise up your, your prestige with Allah uh, as the wajah so I just wanted to mention that that the intention and of course taking the necessary steps to make the hijrah that if someone is serious that they should strive their best benefit from what you have in your societies because you well, alhamdulillah you're not in a war zone you're not in this more than likely if you're listening to this strive and take advantage and benefit yourself 
use your education because this is most of the brothers that I know that have been successful, especially if they want to come to a place like Saudi Arabia and those kind of places in the Gulf countries, it's through their education. There are those who are who were only finishing their high school and, and Allah favored it for them too. Well, alhamdulillah. But their stability in general is not like the stability of the brothers and sisters who were educated, who made the, the steps and spent the wealth and the time and, and so forth to become educated uh, and be able to provide for themselves and their families. And so we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan.